Hello everyone, my name is Isaac Negron, and today I have with me Mr. Sarko, Jose Perdomo, and Adrian Sevenheim, and we are here to present the Steel Court Autonomous Ball. Sorry. Sorry. Well, when presented with the idea of technology and how it's uh, being impacted in our society, more so in sports and sports training, uh, we were presented with the problem that uh, with one of the tools specifically used in soccer, which is a soccer ball launcher, we notice there's a lack of autonomy and diversity in the current products that are out there. Now, when looking at the current products, we notice immediately there's a very large disparity between the prices that are between the cheaper and the more expensive end of uh, products. And this is due to the fact that there's a large um, difference in their range of what they're capable of doing. So we want to be able to incorporate a lot of those abilities within our own product but at the same time add a level of autonomy. Looking further at other technologies, there's things such as the football nut, which is a targeting system used to uh, improve the overall uh, the player experience. And Skillcore is looking to emulate something, something similar to this with the soccer ball launcher and collector combination of team more versatile. Now, our team goals that we've set up is first and foremost, we want to make a soccer ball launcher that is fully autonomous. They'll be able to locate and track a player across the field, and it also needs to be uh, very diverse in the types of shot that it uh, delivers to the target, and also be very accurate and consistent when delivering those shots. As for what motivates us, we understand that soccer is a sport that is revered across the globe, um, and we want to be able to give a new experience to players of all ages, of all levels of play, while at the same time, uh, or excuse me, at the uh, with this new innovative technology. Uh, with our motivation and objectives defined, then we came up with the following design specifications or goals for our pro uh, prototype. First of all, we want an overall cost of $2,000, and we want to keep uh, as many uh, specs relative to what's out there in the market. So that, that is, uh, we want ball speeds from 20 to 50 miles per hour, and an effective training distance from 10 to 50 yards. In addition to this, we want it to be battery powered and rechargeable and have a runtime of from three to five hours. And also we want it to be able to store or have five soccer balls, balls on it at any given time. And lastly, since the uh, player tracking and the distance measuring is uh, probably one of the most attractive features in the system, we want to uh, get them as accurate as we possibly can. With our uh, goals defined, then we came up with the following design concept. First of all, we're going to use a two friction wheel launcher, just as seen in the other uh, available in the market uh, launchers. Well, uh, in order to get our different type shots, we're going to use a 3D view of freedom platform that will allow us to modify um, the different positions for the wheels. And in, in, in addition to this, just to increase the overall training experience, we're adding a reloader. And lastly, for the tracking system, we're using two cameras with OpenCV. Now, a little bit more detail on this. We're initially looking to buy uh, an actual assembled ball launcher. However, if this is not possible due to the uh, cost constraint, we're looking to make our own uh, motor wheel assembly, and we're estimating this to be about $500. Now, uh, for the OpenCV system, OpenCV is a computer uh, vision software that's open source, and it allows us to do both the motion tracking and the distance measuring very easily. Uh, for the distance measuring, we're using the triangulation method, which is you have two cameras at a constant offset, and OpenCV lets us uh, get the angles to the target it's identifying, and then we can measure the uh, relative distance to that player. Uh, it's worth me mentioning that this system has been previously used by the FIU electrical team in a previous year for uh, an automated American football launcher. To control the orientation and the position of our two flywheels, three designs are considered. The first design uses, uh, each design will control the yaw, roll, and pitch of our mechanism. The first design uses a spinning rotating plate at the bottom to give us our yaw motion. As we go further up our mechanism, two platforms will be used to control the pitch and the roll. Um, an advantage of this system will be that each layer will be controlled independently. A disadvantage of the system was that the volume and weight was excessive as well as top heavy. As we go to our second alternative design, a gimbal platform was considered. The gimbal is a device that allows an object to rotate about its own axis. Um, 
for this yaw motion of this mechanism, the spin plate was still used to control the roll and pitch. Two hollowed, uh, two hollowed arch links are placed perpendicular, mounted to two rotary actuators. And in between the slots, a rod will be mounted to the base. And as the links rotate, a desired angle will be given to launch our soccer ball, which will be mounted at the top of the rod. An advantage of this system was that it was compact, and also the workspace was very large. Um, a disadvantage of this system was to manufacture the links, um, it had to be water jetted, which cost about $200, an estimated price. A third design sim used a similar yaw motion plate that was going to mount to the bottom, whereas two linear act uh, instead of two linear actuators, two rotary motors would be attached to a link mounted to a fixed frame, and as the links rotate, the plate would pivot, giving us different pitch and roll to shoot the soccer ball launcher. An advantage of the system was that it was compact, as well as the support in the middle that will be centered at the center of gravity of our plate holds the static load from our flywheels. A disadvantage of this system was the cost of the motors and link linear actuators and the workspace. Because it depends on the link's length, the workspace, uh, we didn't want the workspace to crash at the bottom. <clears throat> to complete the autonomous nature of the automated ball loading system, and the balls need to be reloaded into the ball launcher system. Now, we envision the user being the, re the reloader. They would do this by getting the ball, passing it through a certain target, the ball would travel up the ramp, and then end up in a basket without then allow the ball to move to back to the ball launcher. Now, the target will be accompanied with lights and sensors similar to the first Go 14, and will end the drill. This first design was considered, it's basically a box with all these components, but it was not used due to its many components and high weight. Now the second design is much, uh, much smaller and much uh, e uh, lighter. This will be used in a similar way where a ramp is used to move the ball up and the vertical net, which is loose, will stop the momentum of the ball, allow the ball to travel down the net into a vertical collector, thus letting it go to the ball launcher. Here are two uh, funnel devices that will be used to hold up the five balls as they previously mentioned. This is a very simple design, just uh, conceptual, and it will be used to move the ball launcher from the vertical collector and then to the ball launcher. Here's some analysis that we will be doing. First, for the three degree of freedom uh, platform, we will be doing kin kinematic analysis for the board, as well as doing SOLIDWORKS motion to analyze how they will work, and SOLIDWORKS simulation to see the stresses for the various components of the system. Finally, we will be calibrating the algorithms used for the OpenCV to ensure uh, tracking of the player and moving of the player. Finally, we have some standards, ASTM for material, ANSI for the manufactured parts of the system, ISO for the manipulating the industrial robots, how they move, as well as the safety of the robots so incidents like this doesn't occur in the future. Mm. Some electrical standards so for the battery and the motor for the movement of the platform. Now, we're, besides knowing that we're targeting a worldwide sport that has different uh, styles of play and it's multicultural, we're looking for other ways uh, we can integrate uh, global awareness into our design. Uh, we think about material selection, we want to make sure all of our materials are affordable anywhere around the world and also that they don't have a negative uh, environment effect. In addition to this, uh, safety concerns, we want our design to be safe to use by different uh, range of ages and also to be safe to use in different weather conditions. Since this uh, ball, ball launcher is to be implemented later on into a scope board applications, we want, them, we want it to be uh, compatible with different unit systems and different languages. Uh, lastly, so to wrap up, again, we, we're making a prototype that's affordable and functional and that will overall increase the, the soccer training experience, experience through the scope board methodology. And there's also it's important to note that there's also a lot of design factors that still need to be considered, such as electronic components and systems, and uh, picking the 3D degree of freedom platform design. Next, we have our timeline. These are our expected dates that we're trying to follow for the rest of the, the year and next semester. And lastly, our team poster. Thank you very much. Now we'll open it for questions. not automated. The ones that you see on online are man you have to manually move it. Um, for example, could you go back a couple slides? 
um, the ones we all agree. All these launchers that you see are not automated. Ours is going to be automated. And also, the tracking that Jose was talking about, OpenC will actually find you, triangulate you, and launch the ball to That's not on the market yet. How big is the net that catches the ball? Uh, the net that catches the ball will range maybe about three feet wide and two feet high. Um, this could be a range depending on how hard you hit the ball, really. But the types of rebounders that they have in the market, such as the ramp that I showed, but also uh, types of uh, Titan nets, these ramps, regardless of the speed of the ball, it's going to lift it up maybe about three or four feet. So, the, And the vertical collector is already standing about two feet. So in all, that thing will hold up about five feet of height to the net, and then that will be sufficient enough. So this is for professional application, not recreational, right? It can be for recreation as well. So if I... So I'm starting to play soccer and I miss that net. I have to go and fetch the ball and put it in the launcher. And the essential purpose would be for the for that not to happen, for the net to catch the ball for you and put it back into the launcher. Yes. But if it were not to happen, then you have to go get the ball, essentially. So maybe, maybe you have you want to understand who you're marketing this to, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, currently, uh, it's go for it. It's on. It's early stages, so it is developing new technologies. As you saw the football knot, it's all complete room where you have different targets. So the idea is to overall implement uh, other projects such as the different paths into a, an overall training. Therefore, the ball launcher will serve as your initial point for your training where you, the, the ball is fed to you. You go through all the different uh, training with the paths and then you return the ball to the ball launcher through the collector method which essentially the, the art collector is technically, uh, oh, well, not necessarily technically, but it will be the last target in the, in the training system. All I'm saying is if it's recreate, if it's professional, then that design might work. Mm -hmm. uh, you might want to understand what the precision and repeatability of a kicker is, mm -hmm. seeing if they can consistently kick it within that space. Um, how much, what percent of the time. Mm -hmm. If it's for recreational, you might want to make a much larger net. Okay. I'll take that into consideration. Thank you. Thanks. Yes. So, are you guys just designing the flywheels and the nets, or do you have a motor you're going to attach to this? So, we're essentially, uh, initially, we want to just buy the ball launcher, right? Probably uh, a system like similar to this or a used one. Uh, which will make leave us to design the three degree of freedom platform and the collector and use the motion tracking system. Overall, however, uh, as I said, we're, we're, we're looking to the market for an affordable system like this. However, this is not possible. They were, uh, as I explained, we we're looking to, to make our own assembly, custom assembly, which uh, we're estimating that we don't want to spend more than $500 on it. So that will be a big, uh, our cost is a big uh, design constraint in, in our uh, project. So to make your own custom assembly, you're going to have to get your own motors in? Yes, we'll have to go, to go through all of that. Yes, okay. What's your power source? Uh, cur uh, currently, we want since we want to, to have the, the uh, autonomous uh, feature of the system, right? we're looking to, to be battery powered, such as uh, the steel cord uh, device. And uh, we're looking for uh, sealed lead acid battery. However, we don't know if we'll go through that yet because we haven't done the, all the electronic components and we don't know yet what kind of power we'll need. It's something that we definitely want to implement in, into our system and it will be taken into account. Yes? So Dr. Tomanto said something earlier and I guess it applies here too. Uh, it seems that you're buying the launcher, you're borrowing the uh, distance uh, machine from the electrical engineering department. Um, you're buying the collection that. So, you, is this just a plug everything together project? Uh, we're trying to implement as as much uh, design features as we can. However, since we we feel like our cost is a big factor into it, we're definitely considering different uh, components that, that we can. And then uh, it will essentially uh, 
those components will be essentially assembled. But and what what is your group bringing that is new to to this? Right. Mm -hmm. if, if you if you told me that you were designing the targeting system, that would be your design project, right? You would be buying all these other stuff, but you're designing the targeting system. But the targeting system is already designed by the mm -hmm. electrical department. Now, what what makes what con contribution to this project is your team making? It's the actual platform. So the reason we wanted to purchase one is to actually take the motors and the wheels from the ones that we purchased and then adjust it to the platform, mount it to the platform, and then change it in yaw, pitch, and roll. That's that's our point, the platform. In terms of design, simulations, you know, are you improving the system? What kind of engineering are you inputting into the system? Uh, you know, as far as design goes, other than just buying and putting things together. We always talk about that in general. What's your contribution as far as engineering goes? Uh, we want it to be able to be uh, functional, and we it, it will it will be have to be discussed with Skillcore uh, later on as far as what type of training it, it will be uh, it will be doing. Essentially, this this means that we'll have a set uh, training which will require a certain amount of time, and the functioning of this three degree of uh, three degree of freedom platform will depend on that time, right? The functionality of it, the speed, the velocity, and all uh, that sorts of uh, uh, specifications. So, uh, like through simulations, you can optimize your certain yes, parameters yes, in the design. Uh, yes. That would be a contribution, engineering contribution. Yes. So, 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 improving so, the design on paper, actually. That will be your contribution, you know, to improve the system, and then you can go on to building a prototype. Yes. So. so my problem is that it's November 28th, and you haven't asked for requirements for your project, which it's been three and a half months, I think, since you started this, and that's really bad, because now it means you have five months to actually put together requirements, mm -hmm. buy everything, take it apart, understand how it works, put it back together, and then figure out why it doesn't work, and then make it work. Yes, um, you're aware of that. And great. you also have absolutely no inclinations to how the electrical part of the system's going to work, and it probably is trivial, but um, you might not get that the next time you do something similar to this, where you have an electric mechanical system. And so, like, at least to me, if you would have some sort of like information on how the system will work electrically, and then you can say that you know you have that down, so you can start working on mechanical stuff. Then at least you have some sort of progress. But you have no requirements, so you don't know what your progress is because you don't know where you stand. What do you specifically mean by requirements? You mean like what we want the thing to do? Yeah, like. If you have a design project or any sort of design task, mm -hmm. before you start, you need to know the purpose. And it sounds like you guys don't know the purpose because he just told me that you don't know how long it's going to last, what the velocity of the ball needs to be, um, what we, we didn't, we didn't we mention. We, we, we defined some of the design specifications. You just told me right now that you don't know how it's going to function, which means that you don't know what you're going to build. Just now. Okay. Yes. So uh, if that's the case, then. Everything you said doesn't mean anything because you don't know because you don't know if that's actually going to work with what they're going to tell you, and that's the biggest thing that's been happening pretty much all day is that no one has actually defined their design constraints and solved the problem. They're trying to solve every problem, but they don't even know what the problem they're trying to solve actually is, and that's like a huge problem in the real world because in the real world they're going to make you solve a specific problem. Mm -hmm. And depending on how good your manager is or how good your management team is, they might tell you what your requirements are, or you might need to go ask 10 different people, hey, can I do this, can I do that, can I do this, can I do that? And if you don't ask, the design system again doesn't work, it's on you because it's your project. It's not everyone else who had all the information all you have to do was ask. So make sure to ask what your requirements are before you work on the design project. Thanks for the advice. I just want to wrap something up. You said we have for assembling and which things and putting it together. I think it's an understatement because if you look at the past electrical team, yes, it tracks you, but it doesn't have that much customization. What three degree of platform would do is give you many types of shots. On top of that, these things do this thing does multiple shots, but it doesn't track the player. If you want to be able to track the player and put it the way they, the player wants the ball to come to them, and so the platform will adjust to that and then come to the ball, come to the user. That's what we're trying to do, essentially. The rebounding part, that's just to make it so the player doesn't have to get the ball and put it back into the launcher, or have a second person stand there keep feeding it. I'm not right. saying that the idea is a bad idea. It's just that if you launch a ball at 100 miles an hour to someone, that's not going to work. 
and you don't know what speed that needs to go because you don't know what speed your motor needs to be like working at, what speed the velocity needs to come out at, how far it needs to go. Like these are all things that are fundamental to your design. That if you're trying to make a three degree of freedom system that lets you point up the sky twenty degrees and to the left five, but someone tells you I don't care about that. I literally wanted to go straight. Then there's no point in designing it. That's what I'm trying to say. The idea is a perfectly fine idea, but you guys don't know what you're trying to do, which is my issue. Any other comments? Well, uh, I'll be happy to answer that concern of yours. Is uh, when you play soccer, when you play sports, you often you know, want to uh, reflect on a certain moment. And what they're going to be accomplishing is uh, uh, that through the software, through the app that will communicate with uh, the hardware, is that I, as a user, I can ask for a certain type of ball with a certain type of velocity and curve on it to then be able to recreate a moment that I just had in practice for a game. So what they're going to be accomplishing there is to completely recreate that moment for the user in a facility inside of a By the way, I'm, I'm the creator of this. Okay, that, the statement he made is accurate. Okay. You're doing a voice of the customer. Yeah. You need to quantify your need so it's measurable. So that he has the ability in the spec to be able to tell you, this is what you're asking for. You'll be, you'll be able to say, that's what I want. So at a later time, when he goes to measure it, we've got the ability to measure against it. That's all. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If you don't have a benchmark, then you don't know if the product is going to work for it, right? And they're only engineers, like they're people. They can't yeah. just like conjure things. So it's just a it's a communication thing, which is the hardest thing in my experience as an engineer is to actually talk to people and understand what's going on. It's an easy fix, though. It is an easy fix, and it's something you need to do early. Mm -hmm. Lock it down, and then. Work to it. That's but but uh, my feedback really on that actually is overall, and, and it's funny because I coach soccer, and the vocabulary and the understanding of the mechanical engineer or the physics behind sort of passes within teammates, like that's what I feel like my players need to understand. So it's going to be an excellent opportunity for us to bridge that. So, but I thank you for that. Okay, thank you very much.